On April the 7th, a major news story shook the investors. Tencent's largest shareholder, Process, reduced its stake in Tencent Holdings by 192 million shares, equivalent to 2% of Tencent's issued share capital. On the same day, the three Chinese electric car stocks listed in the U.S. fell sharply, about 9.5 billion USD market loss. On April the 9th, the three major U.S. stock index continued their upward trend, with the Dow and S&P 500 closing at record highs. However, most of the popular China concept stocks fell, with the education giant GSX Tech Edu Incorporated falling nearly 9%. The stock experienced a frightening decline on March 26th, down more than 56% during the day, and by the end of the day, down 41.56%. The market value of the day declined by 7.06 billion. The general decline in share prices of China concept stocks in recent days has triggered great concern in the industry. The main reason is that on March 24th, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission released its latest announcement that it had passed the final amendments to the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act. This act requires foreign companies to pass an audit by the U.S. Public Company Accounting Oversight Board for three consecutive years if they want to list on any U.S. exchange. Currently, mainland China and Hong Kong companies account for nearly 90% of foreign listed companies that do not undergo PCAOB inspection of their audit drafts. The new regulations have caused investors to worry about the increased risk of delisting China concept stocks, and they hope to profit some of their holdings, which led to the recent decline in China concept stocks. The China concept stocks are a very special segment in the U.S. stock market. It is generally defined as a company that has its primary revenue from operations in mainland China, but is listed and traded on the U.S. stock market. China concept stocks also include Chinese companies that are listed in Hong Kong and then traded on the U.S. stock market as American depository receipts, also known as ADRs. Over the past 30 years, more than 500 China concept stocks have been listed in the United States, and 262 China concept stocks are currently traded in the U.S. stock market. The main types of stocks that are no longer traded are privatization and delisting, bankruptcy and liquidation, forced listing due to financial fraud, and delisting by the stock exchange due to prolonged stock price depression. The trust of Chinese listed companies in the U.S. has always been a concern for investors due to the many cases of fraudulent performance of China concept stocks in the past. The SEC has a blacklist of more than 200 shell listed companies, most of which are Chinese companies. Last year, a number of companies were also exposed to financial fraud, including IGE, GSX Tech Edu Incorporated, and Raging Coffee that has declared bankruptcy. The SEC, the top U.S. securities regulator, has introduced regulations aimed at delisting Chinese companies that do not comply with audit requirements, which analysts believe targets the Chinese Communist Party. In a statement, the SEC said the amendments will require foreign companies to certify to the SEC that they are not owned or controlled by a foreign government entity, and will require them to disclose information about the auditing process and government influence. It will also require the company to state whether it has any Communist Party members on its board of directors, and whether the Communist Party building is stipulated in the company's article of incorporation, a requirement said to be aimed at Chinese companies. The statement said the SEC is still actively evaluating how to roll out the rest of the amendment's requirements, including the identification process and the trading ban. Former U.S. President Donald Trump signed the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act last December, allowing U.S. exchanges to delist foreign companies that fail to comply with the U.S. auditing standards for three consecutive years. As early as July of last year, Trump's working group on financial market recommended tightening exchange standards for Chinese companies' IPO to protect U.S. investors from potential audit risks. Chinese companies listed in the U.S. have long been treated differently, where they can issue shares in the U.S. but are exempt from U.S. audit requirements. The PCAOB has little knowledge of the Chinese companies trading in the U.S. because Chinese government argues that they do not share audit records to other countries out of national security reasons. The CCP authorities also imposed a new hurdle last year by requiring Chinese citizens and companies to obtain the permission of the CCP's market regulators and other government agencies if they want to comply with overseas security regulators. 
One of the most difficult aspects of these HFCAA requirements for these Chinese companies is the disclosure of the party membership of their board of directors and the self-certification that they are not controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. According to Wen Zhao, a Canadian analyst on CCP Matters, the only way for these Chinese companies to avoid being delisted is to prove that they are not controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, but then they will be suppressed in China, putting them in a dilemma. Wen Zhao judges that since most of the executives of these private companies are in China, they will basically abide by the CCP's political correctness, and after all, life is more important than money. For example, Alibaba Group, which has been in the media spotlight due to frequent CCP crackdowns, has recently announced that it has further upgraded its Communist Party building efforts by establishing a party committee at its Beijing headquarters. Previously, Alibaba only had a party committee at its Hangzhou headquarters, and after the implementation of the dual headquarters in Beijing and Hangzhou in 2016, only the Communist Party branch was set up at the Beijing headquarters. The Voice of America report suggests that not only Alibaba but other private companies will sooner or later be transformed by the CCP. According to incomplete statistics, 1.585 million legal entities of non-public enterprises in China have established CCP organizations, with the e-commerce company Jingdong having 10,730 party members and 154 party branches nationwide. And the entertainment company Huayi Brothers also announced the establishment of a CPC committee in 2019. With the increasingly stringent regulation in the U.S. and a complex international situation, where do China concept stocks go from here? The Free Press reported on April 4th that the possible options for China concept stocks include: first, remain in the U.S. but listed in Hong Kong for a second time, such as Alibaba and 13 other companies that gradually increased the size of Hong Kong trading, and then eventually delisted from the U.S. Second, voluntarily delist from the U.S. and then list again in Hong Kong or China. Third, choose to abide by U.S. regulations. Analysis suggests that companies that cannot apply with U.S. regulations may have to voluntarily delist. In the wake of the Raishin Coffee financial fraud, a number of China concept stocks are rumored to be planning to delist from the U.S. stock market, such as Sina, Baidu, and Sohu. However, analysis show that it is also difficult for China concept stocks to list in Hong Kong. According to a March research report released by Galaxy Securities, a Chinese brokerage and investment bank, there are currently 48 mint cap companies that meet the requirements for secondary listing in Hong Kong, requiring market capitalization exceeding 40 billion Hong Kong dollars, or the market capitalization exceeding 10 billion Hong Kong dollars and the revenue exceeding 1 billion Hong Kong dollars. Moreover, in the past two years since the implementation of the Hong Kong version of the national security law, the Chinese Communist Party has gradually tightened its control over Hong Kong, resulting in a volatile situation. Hong Kong's status as an international financial center is declining, and its financing status is weakening. And Chinese companies will lose overseas interest if they go to Hong Kong for secondary listing. Another option for China concept stocks is to go back to the mainland for secondary listing. Which is what the Communist Party wants, according to sources cited by Reuters. China is considering setting up a new stock exchange to attract overseas listed China concept stocks back to China. In addition, the new exchange hopes to attract some large U.S. companies to list. According to the source, discussions on setting up a new stock exchange are in the early stages, with the timing and location yet to be decided. One option being discussed is to upgrade an existing listing platform, such as Beijing's new third board market. But another issue is the lack of investor confidence in the management of the mainland's capital markets. Since last year, the Chinese Communist Party has not only halted the IPO of Ant Group, but also investigated internet companies such as Alibaba and Tencent on antitrust grounds. On April 10th, China's State Administration for Market Regulation issued a hefty fine to Alibaba. Alibaba was fined 4% of its 2019 China domestic sales of 45 billion dollars. Which amounted to 18 billion RMB or 2.78 billion USD. Alibaba's response to this was, "We sincerely accept and firmly obey." On March 29th, Radio Free Asia reported that after Alibaba, Tencent, China's largest social media and gaming company, is facing a large risk. China's State Administration of Market Supervision and Administration is launching an anti-monopoly investigation. 
A number of members of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Inspection Team were stationed at Shenzhen-based Tencent last week to conduct a series of investigations, according to several people who asked not to be named. On March 17th, Huang Zheng, chairman of China's largest e-commerce platform giant Pinduoduo, stepped down from his post, causing Pinduoduo's share price to fall for three consecutive days. According to Pinduoduo's latest financial results for the fourth quarter and full year of last year, Pinduoduo reported revenue of 59.4 billion renminbi in 2020, an increase of 97% year-on-year. However, Huang Zheng stepped down at a time when the group's performance was positive, causing concern for many.